Well, Pastor Jonathan Falwell, thanks for taking a few minutes. You know, I want to dive right in. So you have taken over now as Chancellor of Liberty University, also still the senior pastor at Thomas Road Baptist Church. What's interesting to me is this is the first time a Falwell since your father, Jerry Falwell Sr., has been in both roles. Speak to that a little bit. Well, you know, when my dad started, uh, planted the church, Thomas Road Baptist Church back in 1956, you know, he was a pastor for a decade or more before God began laying on his heart the vision for a Christian education. And yeah. so we started with, a, you know, Christian day school. And then in 1971, uh, he launched Liberty University. And so at the time, Lynchburg Baptist College started with just 150 students, but they met in the church. Yeah. And so, you know, the two have always been connected, always been linked, which I think is healthy for both, because mm. what it does is it allows us to recognize that even though Liberty now is so much larger, you know, with 130 plus thousand students around the world and, uh, you know, with, with all of the impact taking place on a global scale, still being connected to the local church is is a great, great thing because it keeps the school grounded in its foundation. It keeps it mm. grounded in truth, grounded in the scripture, grounded in our mission of training champions for Christ. And, uh, you know, my dad often said that with institutions like Harvard that started out the same way that Liberty right, did right. to train pastors to go out and to change the world, uh, it, it quickly shifts if it's not anchored to something. And so keeping those two together, I think, is a, is, is a great move. It's a wise move and mm. uh, a healthy thing if liberty is going to continue in the decades and decades to come until Jesus returns yeah. uh, to continue to be focused on preaching the gospel, training champions for Christ, and reaching the world. Well, you mentioned universities like Harvard or Yale that were intended to train ministers, as you said, and they've all gone away from that. Uh, so many of our institutions are seeking to separate God from education, but as believers, the two are inextricably linked and should be linked. God is the creator of everything that we're studying, so he ought to be intimately involved in it. What do you see as the legacy of Liberty University and the importance of bringing God back into the higher education world? Well, you know, I think Liberty, along with other schools, there are a lot of yeah. other great schools, uh, Christian schools in our nation and world today that are doing the same thing. But I think for all of us, it's important that we recognize that that by keeping, you know, our faith linked, as you said, linked to what we believe, linked to what we teach, uh, mm -hmm. linked to uh, all of the academic excellence that is part of what Liberty does and other schools uh, do, uh, it's important because, you know, my dad always, always said, if it's Christian, it ought to be better. And so, you know, everything we want to do, we want to do with excellence. We want to make sure that we're training, uh, you know, school teachers and nurses and doctors and business people uh, that are going out into many different fields around the world mm -hmm. that they recognize and understand. Like you go out with excellence, you go out with knowledge, you go out with, you know, understanding like the, the things that you need to know in order to be as successful as you possibly can at whatever career, but always anchored in truth and always yeah. leaning back towards the fact that again, that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and recognizing that everything that we do flows from the fact that we are here for one purpose, and that is to bring all honor and all glory to Christ. First Corinthians chapter uh, chapter 10 tells us that, that whether we eat or whether we drink or whatever we do, we do all to the glory of God. And so that has to be at the core of everything that we do in, in Christian you know, academics, in Christian yeah. education, in church work, uh, in our family lives. All of it has to go back to the truth. It's, it's all for Christ, and it's mm -hmm. all to bring him honor and glory. You know, your dad was never one to shy away from politics. He was happy to engage in politics while also making sure the gospel was central. And we're heading into an election year. It's going to be crazy, whether you're Republican, Democrat, or somewhere in between. As Christians, how can we be focused on politics, engage in politics in a healthy way, talk about issues the way you have, the way your dad has, uh, but also not obsess over it? Because I think it's hard to toe that line sometimes. Well, I think it is. And I think it's because of, you just said it like in two different ways. You said mm -hmm. to focus on politics, but then you followed it by the statement of focusing on issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always been a proponent of focusing on issues, not focusing on politics. You know, politics, it always puts you in a corner. It always connects you in one way or the other to a party or to an individual or to a group. But when you focus on issues, what you're really focusing on is like what really matters. Because at the end of the day, I'll be honest with you, I don't care if a person is leading us, if they're a Democrat or if they're a Republican or if they're independent, if they're a person who understands the importance of family, the importance of, the, of religious liberty, the importance of making sure that, that, that we're always doing things according to the principles that have been given to us, going all the way back to the Mosaic Law, all the way back to, you know, to the Old Testament of understanding yeah. what it means to live 
um, doing well and doing right to others and treating others with respect and loving God and loving people. So I don't really care what party it is. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, obviously, we, we do live in a in a society today that is very divisive, no question. You know, they're they're all in separate sides and they're all, you know, launching, you know, shots back and forth over the issues. And so a lot of times it does get into party politics. A lot of times it does go down that route. But man, I just keep focused on, I tell our people at Thomas Road, I tell our students at Liberty, hey, find the person that is most closely aligned with right. biblical truth biblical values, what we believe, and vote for that person and get out and work for that person. Mm. But don't get caught up just by, you know, an R or a D or whatever it might be. Focus on what matters, and that's the issues, uh, the pro-life issues, all of the things that are so very important, not only in our culture, in our country, but uh, in in our faith. Find that person, get behind them, and and make a difference, make an impact, and Mm. make your voice heard. And so if you do it that way, you you really don't find yourself in a situation where you're you know being beat on or being beat up because you're really focusing on what issues what matters rather than you know simply party politics. Yeah, for sure. Well, my last question for you is: as believers, how can we be praying for Thomas Road and for Liberty University as you're stepping into this next season? Well, I, I would say this obviously, and and and. You know, Thomas Road Baptist Church is one church of many, many thousands of churches across the country that preaches the gospel, preaches the word of God, Mm -hmm. uh, that believes the gospel of Jesus Christ is, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Liberty is a place, a proponent for that same truth. And so I would say that the prayers that we would covet from people would be the same prayers that I would covet for other organizations and churches like ours. And that is simply this, to remain faithful, to always understand that we're not called to be popular, we're called to be faithful, faithful to the truth of God's word, faithful to the calling of God that is placed on our lives, making sure that that is what we are running after, making sure that is what is always central in everything that we do. And and I would just say, like, pray for that faithfulness. Obviously, we live in a, a culture and a world today where there's constant pressure, yeah. both governmental pressure and cultural pressure for us to change, for us to soften or to, you know, to water down our message and water down our beliefs. Uh, just pray that we will stand strong and yeah. continue to stand on what we have always believed in. And it's not just, you know, ours, it's it's the faith to stand true to what God has given to us, that we will continue to preach that message and we'll preach it until Christ returns. Mm, absolutely. Well, Pastor Jonathan, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Good to see you.